Hello again and welcome back to Woodhill Park, my 1980s layout in the loft. In this one it's time to shed a bit of light on my station and do a few detailing bits and pieces as well and uh, I might even throw in a, a bit of a running session. So hold tight and enjoy the update. To continue the detailing of my station, I'm adding three courses of bricks, um, weathered slightly, just underneath. The uh, paving stones, just to add some more interesting architecture. If there's any sort of gaps in it, I'll weather them and try and lose them later on. But yeah, I'm sticking three courses of bricks just under the lip of the platform, just to add a bit more interest to the edge of the platform. I pre-weathered it with some Tamiya weathering powders just to blend with the, the existing brickwork underneath a bit. I've been debating over the size of these signs. I, I think they're a bit small, but then I've printed some different ones out and they look too big. So I'm wondering to whether to do a sign of this sort of size with just bigger writing on. That might be the way to go. Because this one I did, does look out of proportion, it does look too big. But I've been using these signs elsewhere. I thought I'd uh, add some of these spare signs I've got, which I think are too big, to some of the rest of the station. 
I did the bigger ones to this Art Deco platform, sort of island building. Uh, in the past I had to raise this building up. It's uh, a Backman building. Yeah, it's not bad, but I had to raise it up. As for some strange reason, they've, they've made it so that when it's actually at station level, the clock would hit any train going past, because there's a, a clock hanging down. And to be honest, I think it would probably look too close to the canopy above as well, with the train passing. Now, I don't know why they got these proportions wrong, but uh, it didn't look right, it certainly didn't work on my layout. So I built these plinths that it sits on. I did this quite a while ago. I mean, they, they don't look too bad, whether I may improve on them. And I think this, the centre section is a lift, so it enables people to come up from uh, sort of an underground subway and in front of it that uh, you can't see at the moment because the class 90s in front of it there is a, a subway in the platform and the platform beyond the Art Deco building there's a subway in that platform as well so the, the thing the story is that you can go down that subway behind the class 90 which is not visible and then pump up pop up in the the lift on the, the next platform or walk beyond it and come up in the subway at that end so there is connection between these platforms at this point and as well as that as you've seen I've already got a footbridge which is further down the layout and uh, if I move the camera a bit you can see it and that covers all platforms from above and uh, actually emerges from the back of the station I didn't really explain the footbridge very well in my last update but I built the foot footbridge to come out of the top section of the the station so there's an add-on part at the back of the station that I, I made and the footbridge goes straight into that so if you can imagine you go inside and walk up some stairs after you got your ticket and then emerge on the footbridge at the top which gives you access to the remaining platforms in the distance if you don't want to get on directly in front of the station. I did say in one of my previous updates that I was having trouble with a crossover in front of the station and I was thinking of replacing it. I thought I'd have one more look at it and what it was doing is shorting across near the, thro the frog you know, the plastic insulator, because these are insulate frogs, the plastic insulator between these parts of the rail is very, very slim. And the wheel was crossing here and shorting as it went past on both tracks. So what I did was take some of the surface area away from this rail over this side and lower it so that I could put some a little drop of epoxy resin in there not much at all just a skin of epoxy resin and then I just rubbed it down lightly with a, a rubbing board and uh, very carefully lowered it to the level of the rails again and uh, that has cured the problem of it shorting across the frog on both ends because I had the same problem up the other end but also there was a, a shorting point here between these two rails as they're very close so what I did was run a, a skin of 
epoxy resin on the inside of this rail just a very small amount and did the opposite end of the crossover as well the same point but a mirror image and then once that was dry I just made sure that there was no obstructions through the, the uh, frog here and just left that fine bit of skin of a epoxy resin on the inside of the rail now I've got no shorts whatsoever and the locos run through it quite slowly with no problem whatsoever so really worth doing I think so it saved me pulling it all up and uh, I'll go with the original track plan Well, I don't often run my locos at a scale speed, but I thought I'd run my 125s at somewhat a scale speed, passing through the station without stopping. So here we go. I can usually run them at full speed and route them coming off, thanks to my time doing the track work. It paid off. So here we go.
next thing I've been adding are these buffer lights by Train Tech. I've added them around the station, but as I've only got three sidings, I've been adding them elsewhere as well. They're pretty good. I think they used to be about two for ten pound, but obviously it's gone up, and now they're doing one in a pack for six pound. You you can find them slightly cheaper, but you'll probably pay on the postage anyway. But yeah, they cost me a bit. Yeah, I went for ten of them, so sixty pound in postage. But you yeah, know, ten will probably be enough, and it's a bit of hassle making your own up. So just thought they're so easy to put in place. They just clip between the tracks. I'm sure a lot of you have got them out there already, but they do add something to the platforms around the station, having these. If I turn my light off I use for filming, it will give you a better idea of what they look like. Pretty good. I may weather them in future, as you can see the board that the LEDs are mounted on and stand up on, including the resistor on the, the shaft of it, but unless you really look closely you don't really see it, and um, I suppose just when I've got the airbrush out, a little touch of weathering carefully at the bottom of it will take care of that. Today I've just been to another toy fair and I picked up all these sacks. They were all mixed colours, reds and creams and whatever, all mixed up, probably old Pico. So what I've done is just gone in the shed and sprayed them all grey and then used a, a paint pen to colour the tag on the top red and I've just weathered my brutes and I filled them up with the sacks. I've glued them in semi temporarily with just copy decks which you probably can see if you look closely because I've only just done it. So there's copy decks between them holding them in in the trolleys. I think I read Brute stands for British Rail Trolley Equipment or something like that which is strange isn't it yeah they were called Brutes British Rail Universal Trolley Equipment interesting anyway Add a bit more detail 
I find quite a few bits and pieces at toy fairs that you struggle to get elsewhere. Oh, the ice cream man's out. Just because the weather's a little bit better. That's it, they're out. So, sorry about the noise in the background. But, yeah, as I was saying, a bit more detail. Got the mail train behind and uh, the guys are all dealing with the mail on the platform. Just had my new tin plate sign delivered today. I'm really happy with it. It looks really good. I'm uh, well chuffed at it. I think it looks the part much better than the old homemade sign I had. Managed to pick up some more passengers and general people for the layout from a toy fair I've just been to. So I'll be adding them to the station and the surrounding area. I also picked up these rather well detailed, I think they're moulded telephone boxes, which are much better than the old railway scene, I think they were called. Uh, plastic ones and uh, as a guy that commented on the channel said to me for this uh, railway sort of junkyard I'm building up might be a good idea to put some telephone boxes in it and I thought that was quite a good idea because them as well as other things are always surplus to requirements on the station and being moved around and renewed so I thought uh, a yard, a railway yard would have all these bits and pieces so I'm putting together the beginnings of a railway yard near the sidings of the station just to keep all the bits and pieces that uh, are no longer needed or about to be replaced on the station I need to work on the the groundwork and I'm gonna enhance all the, the gravel with probably an airbrush, make it look a bit more muddy and whatever, just to make it more random as a rail yard. Uh, the natives are out in the background. God knows what they're playing in their car. But uh, yes, there's never a peaceful moment around here. I've got one of the new telephone boxes in place now and added the rest of the figures to the layout. I've also just temporarily put in place these homemade bollards so been having a go with, I, th I think they might might do not sure whether they're too convincing but too bad I don't think also I've started on the lighting on the station I haven't done the platform lighting yet, you know, the, the lamps but I had to go lighting the station up I'm slowly wiring these lights up for the station and uh, I'm just going to wire this one up in front of the camera.
Now that's all ready to be threaded through the platform and through the tubing I put in the platform and then terminated into a terminal block underneath. This guy's resistor in place and it's you know it's been tinned so there should be a good contact as the screw comes down on the wires and on the resistor. So I'm just gonna get underneath the baseboard. Right, I've been putting the lights in place with a drop of Evo stick because at least that's not too permanent should I want to remove them for any reason. So I've been threading the wires with the resistor through the tube and the platform which all goes through really nicely and then when I get to at this point I'll add some Evo stick quite a liberal amount because it's going to help it to sit there as well I've been setting them uh, at a scale height of, I think it's works out about 13 foot in scale, but on my ruler it's just over 5 centimetres. And to keep them upright, I've been sitting a block next to them. Uh, takes a little bit of flinging around while the glue's a bit runny. It wants to move everywhere, but eventually it will start going off and it will stay put. So let's see what height that is. So just a touch over five centimetres. Ages. I'm just getting it as straight as I can to start with in line with the platform and as upright as I can but because it's Evo stick you can sort of fiddle around with it a bit but yeah leave that to dry a bit they have a habit of turning round sometimes the actual tube inside the stand so once I've fixed the height I've been adding a tiny little drop of super glue just to the base so they all stay at that right height and just a case of letting that go off and then get underneath the baseboard and add a terminal block and then wire it into the 12 volt bus bar underneath just been under there upside down wiring the, this light in and obviously I've got more to do but the results are pretty good they're pretty good lights they do look good so that's another one working
I'm just going into the bus wire, 12 volt bus wire that I run underneath and then just daisy chaining them together so there's only one connection to the bus wire per section underneath but I think they look good they're very delicate though and they're very easy to sort of chip the paint off and break but hopefully they'll stand the test of time as long as I don't catch them and keep breaking them it's now a few days later and I've pretty much finished all the lighting on the station all seems to be lighting up well and looking quite good I've also added these floodlights in in the car park as I already had them and I used them over the other side for the TMD but two of these look quite good in the car park I have got an issue with lighting up stuff lighting up the buildings I've lit up the station so far but in the dark there's a hell of a lot of light bleed through the moulding of the, uh, the station like the, uh, the upper building and I don't know what I can do about this because there's brickwork on the inside and brickwork on the outside so to stop light bleeding through I would have to darken the brickwork on the inside and I don't think that would look very very good in you know in the daylight so I sort of stump really as to how I can stop it glowing I have been thinking of the lights I got at the top, the LEDs put in sort of a, a cupping sort of method around them so that the light shines downwards and not into the walls of the building so I might look into coming up with some sort of sort of shielding that goes around the lights directing the lights or the lights directly downwards I think that could could do it or alleviate a lot of the light bleed anyway but it does look rather funny as all the brickwork is glowing there's there's always problems but uh, that's what uh, makes it interesting trying to come up with solutions the mail train sitting in the station now it looks quite good with a, a load of brutes in front, front of them with mail in front and the lights as it's just starting to get dark quite good I haven't lit this Art Deco building up yet even though I probably have the same sort of problem with it glowing through the brickwork but uh, I'll come to that a bit later and work out what I'm going to do with that. That should be easier because I can paint inside that as you won't be able to see inside like you can the station over here. On the whole I'm pretty pleased with the lighting on the station. It's come out pretty well. Pretty good. I do like it. Gives another sort of feel to the layout having it sort of a twilight that's uh, another acquisition I've got a, a new class 47 male train so it's not been weathered yet I'll have to weather it soon uh, that's sitting in the platform which has been pulling the mail train I seem to be getting some sort of interest in having different sort of 1980s police cars as I've, I've now picked up a, a Capri for like a, a fast pursuit vehicle that they used to have and also a, a marina which 
you can't see very well. well it's not bad, it's more of a plan view of it. A marina, as well as what I've already got. And uh, the station seems to be well populated with police. But due to the, the latest bit of vandalism and graffiti, there's a, a very strong police presence at the moment. Well, that's my story anyway. The floodlights have got four lights on one post and they're made by EVE model. And I, I had mentioned them when I was building a TMD because they're the same lights and they do a good job of lighting up the car park. Even if I turn all the lights out, the car park's very well lit. I've had a go at making my own bollards up just to see what I could do and they, they don't look too bad actually there's a guy that's parked on a double yellow even though there's bollo bollards in a way and he's getting a talking to by the local bobby with all the lights out and just the layout lights on there's quite a good atmosphere to the station as I said before the car park's well lit but the lights on the station are a softer light and uh, the light is a bit dimmer but quite bright and white underneath the, the floodlights in the car park station's really glowing now as you can see how bad it is so I'm going to have to do something about that but the rest of it I'm very pleased with it In the foreground you can just see my rolling road and my programming track. I think in the future I'll be moving these and landscaping this bit. But they sit here just alongside the station at the moment. picked up this British, British Telecoms Land Rover at the toy fair I was last at I thought that goes with these these chaps working on the pavement I placed some new ticket machines on this side of the footbridge on either side which you can just about see as it's a bit dark these raised flower boulders I've got an idea how to make some more so 
I'm going to have a go at making some additional ones to put on the platform even though these ones were ones that were supplied by a modelling company which I, I think I picked them up at a toy fair as well but I don't know who made them but some sort of modelling company but I'm going to have a go at making my own I've got some uh, bits and pieces and I think I can come up with a a fairly good uh, solution to making a few raised borders like this. Quite a bit of detailing done, even though I'm still adding more detail. And I can think of a lot more I want to add as well. So it's uh, an ongoing process. I must do something with that station though. That does look rather silly. Looks like it's uh, on fire. <laughs> it's glowing so much. Now for a bit of instant daylight. And uh, that's what it looks like with the loft lights on which obviously makes the station look a lot better so I've definitely got to tone down the lights as well as direct the lights downwards I need to finish off redoing the, some of the brickwork as well as you can see the difference in the brickwork on the right to the left. I've got to st still do a bit more in front of the station. I think the new brickwork looks far better. Now, as I've already said, I'm going to have a go at making some flower beds that sit on the station. I've got a bit of a cunning plan and what I can make them out of. So I'm going to give it a go and see how it goes. Now, the piece of junk I, I'm considering using for this is an old chip carrier an IC carrier that uh, when you buy the IC they sometimes come in and uh, you take the IC out and use it so I've got a load of these in a bag that I've had for a while and to me if I zoom in I get the camera to zoom in they look quite a bit like a, a container maybe a, a metal container that uh, would hold some flowers yeah, the flower display on the on the platform <coughs> so I'm going to spray, spray, spray them black, matte black which I've done with a load already and then uh, I'm going to well, I propose 
to put something inside you know, a bottom to it or you know a shallow bottom and then put some resin in there maybe if I colour it brown and then before it goes off stick some long static grass into it and then after that dip it in some PVA or the grass in some PVA and then colour the tips so they look like they've got flowers on you so wish me luck <laughs> if it doesn't work you probably won't see this <laughs> but we'll see how it, how it goes but uh, it's not going to cost me much other than a bit of time fiddling around well I'm glad to say I did have some sort of success in making my own sort of raised border or I suppose you might say trough really because they're troughs and this is my effort which I'm not too sure might be a little bit tall but saying that it's a metal trough so it could have been made any sort of height size now I've just painted the little moulded bits that go down the sides a sort of a copper now you don't have to do that but just as they're, they're moulded I thought I might decorate them and uh, I'll just put a load of daffodils in there or a yellow flower of some sort come out reasonably well I reckon anyway I'll show you what I did just in case you want to make this sort of same sort of thing out of junk initially I mixed up some resin and coloured it with some acrylic paint but after doing it being you get so many stems in the container you can't really see any soil so I think I might just go with the resin on its own now as this seemed to be a pointless exercise now the bits and pieces you're going to need to make one of these flower troughs is obviously the IC carrier and sometimes they come with sort of RS and the actual chip numbers on the top of them so you, you might need to rub it down like I've done and even if you haven't you know you painted it already to be honest when you rub it down you get a matte finish anyway so you need to rub that down you need an item to go inside another plane going over and uh, what I use is this foam board you could use anything you can use plastic card or anything it's just a something to fill up the hole in the trough so you just cut it to size and then push it inside the trough to pack it out really just push it until it is level at the top but held back by the like the frame that holds the chip it's not going to be seen so it doesn't matter it's going to be held in there by the epoxy glue so it really doesn't matter if it's perfect once you've done that you need the epoxy glue but before you mix up the glue because the glue is five minutes to cure so you're in a bit of a rush really to do to do this but then it, it also speeds up the job what I've been using is seven millimeter long static grass it's just a medium green uh, static grass by Woodland Scenics and I just put a good pinch in one of these plastic trays you could put it in anything and I just bang it until a lot of them are on their side sort of all horizontal so I can get in there you know quickly with a pair of tweezers and grab a bunch of it that's all going one way if you know what I mean 
So you don't want too much, you just want enough to sort of tap it until you get them all laying together. And have some, in my case, you could use any watery adhesive, even sort of lacquer, but I've just got some uh, World War Scenics layering spray just sprayed on a, a bit of plastic bag with a, a cotton wool bud just so I can brush that over the grass once the grass is stuck in the glue and whatever colour you want to put on top of the grass to make them into flowers now I was going to use red as well but I've just found out I haven't got any red I thought I had some red so at the moment they're just going to be uh, yellow flowering plants anyway I'll get on and mix up the aridite or epoxy glue because it's not actually aridite but it's a five minute drying time epoxy glue so I'll shut up and get on with it to spread it around filling up the top of the, the trough and have it reasonably deep maybe a, a good millimetre mil and a half deep you don't want to drag the glue over the trough as you remove the cocktail stick from doing it, doing it. so you want to make sure you can get the glue off it before you pull the stick away. So that's it, so there's no, no glue dragging over the edges. Put the glue aside so you don't put your elbow in it or nothing else falls in it, which is easily done. So it's going right out of the way. Now this glue will dry within five minutes. So it's not too much of a rush, but you've got to get on with it. So, pick a decent bunch of grass out of the container. Trying to keep them upright and start pushing them in to the adhesive. Now the adhesive is still pretty soft, so they will fall over a little bit to start with. They're just keep putting them into the glue trying to get them upright but they will sort of tend to go where they want to go as well and I just keep doing that you filled it up as much as you can get in there that sort of covers all the glue as I said I I did color the glue but I don't think it's worth it unless you're going to leave gaps on purpose so you can see the soil there's no point in coloring the adhesive and it probably would be chock-a-block with plants as a sort of well mature anyway I continue to try and straighten them up get them to stand up a bit before the glue takes hold which will happen pretty soon because the, the more you got standing up the more they're going to look like they've got flower heads on them Mm. 
and to keep an eye on the state of the glue you can always carefully get your piece of card back with the glue and see how the glue is doing see if it's starting to go off or not and it's just starting to thicken so I've probably got a minute or so before that goes off so I'll just continue to stand these up a bit more We'll leave it like that for a moment to go off and uh, I'll be back by the magic of photography in a second. I'm back and the glue is dry, just a bit I had left on my bit of cardboard is now dry, just a bit soft and tacky. So now I can carry on with adding the flowers to it. So I st tried spraying this but it just ends up with <coughs> sort of droplets going down into the middle of it which is not what you want you know, unless you can come up with a method of just touching the tops of them you know spraying just doesn't work so what I've been doing is using the layering spray on a piece of plastic like this with a cotton wool bud and then just brushing the tops of them and just so you don't get too much on but you do want sort of droplets on the top of the, uh, the grass you, you don't want it too caked together so enough but not too much I suppose it's the way to put it that's probably enough and then you just get the colour that you're working with sort of fine scatter and then uh, upside down very carefully dip it in And there's your flowers. So if you think you can get some more on, keep going. So you don't want too much because it just looks caked on. But once you've got so much on, then obviously tap it and get the excess off. You can get quite a lot off. But then uh, it makes them look more individual if you can shake out the extra excess between them. So that's it pretty much. And if you want to decorate the the container then you know acrylic paint pens. Um, I just painted these sort of they look like extension sort of legs and I just painted them just to give an effect but you don't have to do that you can just leave it plain and uh, that's it really there you have it one flower trough I'll go in a bit closer with the camera Yeah, that's a pretty cheap way to make a flower trough. Yeah, they seem to work these IC carriers. Very cheap, so I'm sure you've got some static grass and some scatter of various colours. All you need besides that is something to, to fill up the IC ch chip holder and a bit of quick drying epoxy glue very simple 
I nearly forgot to say there are other ways of doing it is uh, buying some of these that sort of shrubs and flowers that people sell on sheets online and they come with sticky bases on them even though I think this one I've managed to put it on the layout decided I didn't want it and the sticky seems to be no good anymore so I'll have to glue it in with a, a glue but yeah same thing really just except it's already pre-made just cut it to shape and then just slip it in the trough you get the basic idea really it's just a way to fill the trough and these are already pre-made if you buy them so you pretty much come up with something like like that now these IC carriers how you get hold of them um, I don't know really I mean I've got loads because I, where I work they're constantly throwing things out like these, this sort of thing um, if you know somebody who works for an electronic company and then uh, they'll probably have loads of these that they just constantly throw out or recycle so we might be able to find something very similar but they make excellent containers and uh, it's a form of recycling really isn't it anyway hopefully this idea is some help for somebody and as I found it quite helpful myself to save a bit of money and populate the station with flowers really and other detail as I'm limited for the colour scatter I've got at the moment I'm just going to carry on and uh, use some of these pre-built stuff pre-bought stuff I've got uh, a while ago and I haven't used them on the layout I did think uh, amongst some of the, the undergrowth they looked a bit too bright and garish so I didn't use them so rather than go to waste I think I'm going to populate the troughs with these Another flower container in the station. Let's hope these don't get vandalised.
that just about wraps it up for this one thanks for staying with the channel and thanks for subscribing it is free and uh, it's a shame that my subscription level is not rising quicker which uh, don't, I do find a little bit um, disheartening you might say I suppose so if you uh, are interested in what I do and uh, you still like to see the updates I do then please subscribe because it does help to grow the channel and make me feel that what I do is worth it anyway thanks again and see you next time